Yep, goes right up there. Very cool, very cool. Yeah, very easy upside down. I got power off upside down here. <laughs> That might be my first power off inverted pass, Steve. There we go, add a little bit. Guys, Rich here. Welcome back to the RC Informer YouTube channel. And today I have a new release to show you coming from FMS Models. And stay tuned because we're going to have new, even more new releases coming from FMS very soon on the channel. So stay tuned, like and subscribe, hit that notification bell so you guys get advised when those videos are available. We're going to have some really cool stuff to show you. But for today, I have the new 2500 millimeter. ASW-17 glider. This is an airplane I think is going to really redefine the way people think and the way that they perceive foam airplanes and in particular foam gliders. The fit and the finish on this airplane are spectacular. It's kind of like nothing I've ever seen. The, the surface of the wings, which I'm going to show you here, the wing surfaces and the, and the surfaces of the foam are so glassy smooth. They must have a new procedure they're using to, to, to make it like that. And best of all, there's no glue, there's no screws. You literally just snap this thing together in a couple of minutes. You put a receiver and battery in and you go fly it and that's it. It's really pretty darn sweet. Um, I do highly recommend everybody check the links in the description below this video. I'm gonna have a lot of links down there mostly to the Horizon Hobby product page because they have a lot of really good pictures to show you the innards of this airplane, how it's kind of constructed that I can't really show you in this video without pulling the airplane completely apart. But it'll show you how nicely everything is designed. And I'm gonna show you some of that in this video, some of the construction of it, but it's really pretty nice. Also folks, if you do choose to get one and you use our link below, and put one in your cart. That supports our channel at no extra cost to you guys. It does help us out. We really do appreciate that. As usual, folks, in this video, most of our building and assembly and setup kind of stuff, we'll have hyperlinks in the description below and in the comments section. So you can watch this video in its entirety or using those time-stamped hyperlinks, you can click on those and go to a specific part of the video that you might want to reference and see uh, later. Also, folks, we are on Instagram, Twitter. We're posting stuff every day for you guys. So you can guys can kind of see what we're up to and kind of what's coming next. So check out Instagram. And of course, again, like and subscribe, share, and hit that notification bell so you see the newest videos uh, when we do put them out. So. Flights on this airplane, we will get to flying this shortly and give you guys several flight demonstrations of this, probably with different batteries and, um, and probably different wind conditions and so forth. Those will be available on the RC Informer YouTube channel. Also, in the upper right-hand corner of this video, like all of our videos, we will have, in, there's a, a little round circle, it's an information card. If you click on that even right now as we're watching the video or any time during the video, it'll drop down a menu, you can do it right now, and it'll show you as we add those flight demos, we don't always have them up right away, as we add those flight demos, we're gonna put those there. So you can click that now, drop down the window, and get right to the flying videos, and we're trying to make that kind of as easy and convenient uh, as we can for you guys. So with that, let's open this up, let's get it in, out of the box, and show you guys how nice of an airplane this is. To start off the review, we're just gonna take a quick look at the uh, outside of the box. You can see I took the uh, foam crate out already, and I 
cut the tape so we can get it open. And we're just going to look at a few things. We're pretty much going to lay out all the parts pretty much the way this uh, picture shows right here. You can see how simple everything is. But as we look at the outside of the box, we can see some of the specs. A 40 amp Predator ESC, 750 kV uh, brushless motor, and runs on a four cell pack. So also other features, uh, snap together, no glue, two piece wing, functional flap. So we're going to need at least um, a five channel radio to offer this, offer the op operate this, or at least a five channel uh, receiver there with radio. Uh, fold away, high efficiency propeller, and made of durable EPO. So with that, we'll go ahead and we'll get the box aside. We'll go ahead and slide the crate down that you all can see here. And uh, let me get this uh, centered up and check this out. When you get the top of this off, look how nicely this thing is arranged in here. Also. I do recommend, at the very least, keep at least the bottom portion of this box, because when you build this glider, it's two and a half meters and it's huge. And by just notching out the tail back section of this box, um, you can use the bottom section as a storage cradle to take this to and from the field. So it's really pretty nice. You kind of get a nice storage box uh, as uh, this thing comes along. So to get all the parts out of here, we'll just get the wings out. You can see how nicely uh, these things are installed in there. You just kind of pull them out one at a time. We'll get the instruction manual out here. We'll get the uh, the other wing out and so forth. This is our uh, vertical star, sorry, our rudder. We'll get our horizontal stabilizer and elevator out of the box. The fuselage comes out real nice. I'll just pull that and just sort of set that down there. And then right in this little hole, you have to kind of stick your finger in there. You don't want to miss this. This is your, uh, your tail push rods and uh, uh, just a couple of set screws. And then over at the front here, really nice spars that are in here that are sort of a, these are like a combination, and we'll get a close look at, a, at, a, at them. They're a combination steel and aluminum, I believe. And they're very, very slick, uh, very, very well made. We'll see if we can get the, uh, the tape off of this thing. They got it taped in there pretty well so these things don't, uh, don't pop out of here. They're kind of heavy, so if they if they get, uh, if they fly out of here, uh, they could do damage to the airplane, so they got it taped in there pretty good. So, uh, but with that, folks, that's really it. We'll go ahead and lay out all the parts, and we'll take a look at everything in much closer detail. You can see here the layout of all the parts that uh, came out of the box, and you can see how simple of an assembly uh, that this thing is going to be. Um, I just took a peek in this before, but this is my first time actually getting it out and really looking at it. And I gotta say the finish is outstanding. I'm gonna try to show you guys how smooth the finish is, but you sort of almost have to touch it to really kind of see. It's better than any foam that I have ever seen on, on an airplane. So starting here at the top is the uh, main fuselage where servos installed, your motor, ESC prop, wheel, everything's ready to go, ready to have everything snapped into it. You got your two main wing panels, servos installed, spars are in, your main spar there all ready to be snapped in position. And there's your horizontal and your vertical stabilizer, again, ready to be snapped onto the airplane. So we'll start off here with the fuselage. I'll reach down and, uh, and pick this up and uh, we'll get a closer uh, look at this. Um, I hope you guys can see this. You should be able to see this in the, uh, the 1080p video, but the canopy itself has this textured finish just that's really, really cool. And then starting here at the front, there's these sort of semi NACA type scoops and you can see our motor in there 750 kV predator all ready to go our folding propeller that we're going to use the propeller to get up to altitude and speed and then turn it off let it fold and then glide around but it's all installed already i would recommend a dab of foam tack on each one of these e-rings just to keep those uh, help help keep them in place further uh, and looks like there's a scoop on the underside here as well and then on both sides so air gets in and then air can get in through this lower vent. You can see our speed controller in there, our Predator, uh, I believe it was a 40 amp and then an exhaust hole. So air can come in the front nicely through three vents. It can come in through here over the speed controller and exhaust nicely out of that tail uh, hole. Um, nice wheel. Uh, installed and ready to go that's screwed in place and it looks like it's threaded into the other side but I gotta tell you folks I don't know if you can see this in the video I hope you can but the finish of this is outstanding now you can see the beads 
but you can't feel them. When you move your finger across here, I don't know what they're using. Maybe they're using some kind of a releasing agent and better vacuum or something, but you can't feel those beads at all. It is just amazing how nice of a slick finish this is. And then as we go down the center here, your spars are gonna glue right into this. And you can see our wireless wing connector. These are those new types that are really nice that uh, don't have any connection problems with them at all. These are your locks, these little holes here that when your wing slides in, and we'll do that here in the video, they lock into these little holes. And then this piece of aluminum is a solid chunk of aluminum. I will try to put an overlay up here for you guys can see. Also check that out on the Horizon Height site. The product page in the description below shows you a lot of these pictures too. But this is one solid block of aluminum that goes all the way across to the other side that those two spars screw into. So it's a tough, tough, all aluminum spar with a spar block in the center to connect everything. But look at this nice plastic wing root receiver where this whole thing slides into it. It's all one big plastic fitting on both sides. Just super, super sweet. I can't get over the, the detail of this. And then uh, as we get down to the tail, you can see there's a tail skid. No need for a wheel. We're just skidding this thing in. And you can see our fitting for our horizontal stabilizer that, uh, that locks into place there. And this is the lock mechanism right here that it snaps in. But it's all a nice precision molded plastic fitting that goes in. Let me flip it around. We'll look at the other side of it. And you can see how nice that thing is. It just slides in and locks and that's it. No screws needed. You've got your servos here uh, mounted and ready to go. One for your elevator, one for your rudder. They're already mounted, installed, ready to go. It looks like there's a doubler here, and that is uh, for the back end of your, uh, your servo mount. And then as we look at the back of this thing, you can see the three locking um, kind of pins here, or where the pins lock into these, these enclosures. And you literally, it's a submerged style hinge, as you can see it's curved there. Your, uh, your rudder just literally just snaps into place there. And notice I am holding this by the boom. That's because this thing is so rigid, it's not just foam. There is a massive, massive carbon tube that runs the length of this thing to make this thing super rigid. So as I try to bend this thing, I can, I can only almost hardly flex this thing because it's so tough. They have such a tough carbon tube in there running down this because this is a thin piece of, of, of foam that it is really, really tough. So, and with that, let's see where that, that spar goes. Again, that spar runs probably the length of this all the way down and goes into the cockpit area, which look at this nice button that you press to release this. That's a first for FMS, really nice latching canopy, but you press that, it pops off, and then we can look down in there, and I'm gonna show you as we get in there, check out where the carbon spar goes. You can see all the way down in there, that black tube spar, it almost looks like they put more spars possibly inside, but that's where your carbon spar uh, comes up and mates up against uh, that wood, that little black uh, kind of spot in there. It looks like there's a connection there. I'm not sure what that's for, but we'll, I'll check that out as I get more uh, into this thing. But as we open up the canopy, you can see how nice everything is in there. There's our motor mount in there, all set up. Wires are already run down into the floor to the speed controller underneath again for cooling. And then back up here for your battery wire, which has fallen all the way down in there. And then you've got some Velcro here. If you guys want to use Velcro here um, to lift that up, you can detach this uh, Velcro right here to your battery, then Velcro it down, and your battery is just going to go into the straps. Probably only need a 2200 milliamp pack, 2600 milliamp, something like that. Want to keep the glider as light as we can just to get uh, just enough power to get it up into the air and then glide around. So we've got your connector. Um, I do wish they would use, uh, you know, either a Deans or an EC3 or IC3 or something. But, uh, you know, they are using these yellow XT60s. But all your connections are here. You can see everything. Elevator, rudder, throttle, flaps. Everything's ready to get connected in. And it looks like a receiver can go right kind of back in here and we'll mount that somewhere to run the antennas. But check out check out this latch. That's pretty pretty darn slick how that works, how nicely that latch is in place. And we'll go ahead and we'll put that, uh, put that, uh, put that back in place. We'll get the, uh, again, the textured canopy is really pretty, pretty sweet, that texture that it already ha that it has in it. I don't know why they did that, but it is cool. It's very different. And uh, we'll get this in place and let's latch this down. 
very nice button type canopy. Again, that's keeping it clean, keeping the plane as drag free as we can so it'll glide glide super, super nicely. So we'll get this thing down there. I can't wait to get this one out flying and take a look at this thing. And then let's go ahead and get one of these wings. The wings on this baby are impressive, folks. They're big. Again, you know, you're looking at a full two and a half meter wingspan and then a first for FMS that I've never seen before. So look at this leading edge. Look at this plastic part. The whole leading edge is a plastic piece. It's a plastic sheath that runs the full length. Now there's, it's in three parts. The first one runs from here down to right here and you can see where they join together. And then you run over to here and then there's the other one and then the rest of it runs the full length. But we now have a fully sheathed plastic leading edge to the wing. So this is durable. You can see how tough it is. You can't ding your leading edge, especially with all the grass landings you're probably going to do. You can't damage that at all. It's just outstanding. And then I'm hoping you guys can see this, but the finish on this thing, you can see the beads, but you can't feel them. It's almost like there's a glassed edge or a glassed coating over this where it is just absolutely uh, flawless, how shiny and how smooth this uh, leading edge is or how, how, how smooth the surface of this thing is. And again, there's that plastic sheath you can see running the length of the wing. It's very sharp. Also, folks, rigidity, just like the fuselage we saw there. This baby is tough. You can hardly flex this, and this is going to be a sweet glider to fly. It almost hardly even flexes due to all the spar that's a in there and you can see the spar slot running the full length it's a carbon spar that runs the full length of this thing all the way and uh, you can see those slots and you can see the thickness of that tube the tube is really pretty darn thick that runs all the way the length of this thing it's just a big 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 tube so you have a wing skid as well no wheel needed it's kind of nice not having a wheel it's just something else to lose you just need to skid this in it probably flies very slow and then check out the spars in the aileron it looks to me I don't think it's aluminum. It looks like a steel spar like a hollowed out It even has a hole in the middle of it so I think it's actually a sort of a hollow tube spar that you can see here I'll try to zoom in on that uh, just a little bit. You can see that whole tiny hole in the middle and it's glued in with contact cement and notice here folks I'm holding this by the wingtip and you see how rigid this thing is. It doesn't really uh, flex much. In fact the only flexing it's doing is from the spar out to the wing because the spar actually stops there but the rest of this is super rigid. It doesn't flex you know hardly at all. Now the hinges are foam hinges but they are laminated. I can see it shining back all the way You've got nice streamlined aerodynamic um, servo boxes with, uh, with their uh, linkages already installed, a single set screw so you can adjust that. But this is a first, folks. I've never seen a metal sparred aileron and flap. Look how nice that is. I am just blown away. Minimal tape just to cover up the wires going out to the ailerons and flaps. And, uh, and that is it. Um, probably if I had one complaint on this airplane is that it probably needs some color uh, because it's all white. Probably I'll put some tape stripes on the underside and top side so we can differentiate the difference. Uh, but then here we got, let's get to the root of this thing. And you can see this plastic fitting where our spar goes into, our locks, our locking shafts, those two things go, plug into, which we'll show you here shortly. And that's where everything goes in and locks. All our aileron connections and uh, flap connections are made right here. And it's just a beautiful plastic fitting. Again, this whole thing will slide in, and then as it engages, as those uh, pins go in there and engage the inner pins, these slides go in, and then they'll snap into place. And we'll, we'll show you that shortly. So as you insert them, they'll kind of slide in. You may have to pull them in a little bit, get it in place, and then release them, and they're locked in place. And then you squeeze them to remove it. So really nice. This is all a big plastic fitting here, folks. They're really making some sweet stuff, folks, over at, uh, at FMS. And once again, look at that. Look at that plastic sheeting running the length of this thing. That's just, that is simply outstanding. I can't, look at the wing, how clean the wing is. That's going to make this for a really great glider, as slick and mirror, actually there's a good shot. You can kind of see it mirror back at you. Even the foam has a mirror to it and it's just super, super slick. So fully impressed with this folks, dying to get this one out. 
Let's go ahead and slide that right over here. And let's look at these wing spars. This is what screws into the main fuselage there, into that aluminum block in the center. And look how nice these things are. Um, this is, I believe, sort of a, um, um, a combination of steel on this end, and then it converts or turns over to aluminum, so it's uh, kind of a lighter weight, and, and it's still super, super rigid. So it's really sort of a composite metal spar, again, both of these that screw into an aluminum block in the center. Um, next up, folks, uh, I'm gonna show you here the horizontal stabilizer uh, and the, uh, and the uh, elevator along with the uh, rudder. You can see here the, uh, the hinges here uh, in there. And again, that glassy, smooth finish. You can see how nice that is all the way along here. And uh, you can see it does have an inside spar. I think that this spar is fiberglass. It runs all the way the length through there and it makes the tail super rigid as well. It flexes a bit, but, uh, but just really nice. Again, foam hinges, fully laminated. Really nice plastic horns with uh, plastic doublers here to join the uh, to join the two halves together. Do you see how nicely those work? It's probably not a bad idea. Exercise these a little bit before you you know get it all hooked up just to, to kind of work in the hinge just a little bit. And then in the center is our really nice plastic fitting with the slide-in rails where this just slides into the tail. And again, we'll show you here that shortly. Uh, here's your vertical. Cool decals applied. Again, it is a submerged style hinge. There is our hinge point with our a carbon rod there, there, and there. Again, this thing is just gonna snap. It's gonna snap into the back, into that uh, that vertical. And, uh, and that's really it. It does have a nice, uh, it probably has a spar running through there. I don't see one, but uh, actually, you know what? It's probably using the hinge as the spar running through there. And then again, really nice, um, easy connector style, you know, horn with a really play, like zero play, easy connector on all of the, uh, the connections for this thing. And that's really it, folks, for the parts on this thing. Uh, it really is pretty darn sharp. Now let's take a quick look at the instruction manual here. We'll flip around here. Again, you can see the parts, real simple setup. Uh, and as we get in, here we go. Snap your vertical on, snap your horizontal on, put your rod on for your uh, rudder, and put your rod on for your elevator, real simple stuff. You do have to turn an Allen wrench, so, uh, but that, that's all you really need. And then you do screw in your spars into that aluminum center block. You slide your wings on, folks, and you're done. There's your receiver, battery, get it all together. There's some elevator throws uh, or some control surface throws they do have in here. And then a couple things real important like the CG. And we'll talk about that when I do get the flight demo done. It looks like it's showing 70 to 80 millimeters aft of the leading edge. So, and I'm being told just put the battery in the two straps and uh, that should be a good CG for it. So anyway, folks, uh, that is really it. And you can see how nice of a plane this is. Now let's go ahead and snap it together and show you how quick it goes together. It is now time for the moment of truth. I'm gonna do my best to assemble this uh, the entire airplane in just one take, just so we can see how easy it is uh, to complete. And I am cheating just a little bit. Uh, as you can see here, I went ahead and I, uh, I started uh, putting, I put the set screw in the easy connector here uh, for both uh, um, the uh, aileron or for the elevator and the rudder. And then you can see here, uh, I went ahead and inserted the rods uh, in advance because I am doing this on camera. Uh, just for the, uh, the elevator and the uh, rudder. So here's how we're gonna do this. I'm just gonna shift hands here so I can show it to you on camera. I do have the extra level of difficulty of having to do this on camera with two hands. So all we're gonna do is just taking the elevator. You can see here we're gonna find the, the notch that it fits down into. And it's a plastic notch and it just fits right in. And we're gonna snap it in position. And that's it. It's really pretty much in place. and. Uh, ready to go flying and now we're just going to simply take the push rod here and again i am doing this uh, on camera here folks so i'm going to line it up with the hole push it through you have to bend the rod just a little bit to get it to go through there and then uh, i'm going to go ahead and adjust the uh, the push rod there so it so it fits in position i've got this other side that's kind of binding on here that's why it's stopping me from putting that in place so while I've got there, I'm just gonna take my Allen wrench here, my one and a half 
millimeter and just tighten it just a little bit just so it doesn't uh, just so it doesn't come out of place we'll uh, have to power up the servos first um, before we uh, we fully uh, you know set that we have to make sure our our, uh, our horn is neutralized and then uh, and then get that in the right position get the get the get the elevator neutral and then we can uh, lock that uh, set screw down um, now for the rudder um, it's uh, almost just as easy except we're really just gonna just gonna snap this thing in place. So we're gonna take this thing, just put it right, uh, line it up, and you can see the pins there. We're gonna line it up with its hinge points right here, and very carefully, we're just gonna snap them. This is the first time I've done this, folks. Snap it in place, make sure the bottom one's in, and there we go. We have a nice rudder control, and we're gonna do the same thing. I'll go ahead and I'll zoom in here just a little bit. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing with the uh, rod here. We're going to line it up with the hole in the uh, easy connector. I'll try and keep that centered for everybody. And then uh, once we get it in there, we can move our horn just a little bit, make sure it's uh, pretty much neutral. And again, just for right now, so it's not flopping around, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my one and a half millimeter here and just mildly tighten it down just so it doesn't pop out of there. And then we'll go full zoom out here and we can see that our tail assembly is in place. That's it, it's just, uh, just that simple. And now for the wings, folks. This is uh, the part that's pretty neat and pretty straightforward. It's very, very simple. We're gonna take our, our spars here. We're gonna line them up in there with that steel end in that aluminum block. And we're gonna tighten it up. And I have, this is my first time doing this, folks, uh, for real, so. We'll kind of see how this goes. And to really kind of tighten it down just a little more, if you just put something through that hole and then just tighten it a little bit, that'll make sure that it's uh, really kind of locked down. Um, and you don't need any, shouldn't need any thread lock for this because you got a, you got a steel set of threads that are going into um, an aluminum hole, so aluminum thread. So you can feel it as you put it in, it bites. It's a very precision fit. Once again, just gonna tighten it up and uh, We'll do this, uh, put that in there, and just again, just tighten it up just a little bit. You don't need to turn it very much. You don't want to strip the threads or anything. And uh, we'll see how that looks. Uh, from the front view, it looks like it does have a little bit of a dihedral in it, and, uh, and that's sweet. So let's see if I can take this uh, two meter bird in my, uh, <laughs> two and a half meter bird in my, uh, my workshop here and get this thing uh, to fit into place. So let me turn this around. Again, I got quite a level of difficulty here to get this thing uh, around. Let me shift this um, and show you how this is going to go in place. Um, here's one wing. As I get uh, all the way towards the end here, I'm going to slide this on, trying to show it to you guys in the camera. Just get this thing in position, get it to slide. And you can see once it's in there, we're going to slide this together. This is a mighty challenge on the camera, folks, but it is going together quite well. So. We'll go ahead and slide these into place, and you can see these pins starting to lock in position, and there they go. And if they don't fully lock in, and they actually just did, it popped in, just push them to the outside, and you can see that that wing, that wing is on, and I am able to maneuver around uh, the shop. You can see what a great fit this is, and also, uh, one thing I didn't point out before is this little corner here is a reinforced doubler, so you can't damage the corner of that flap, so pretty slick. Then we'll just grab our other wing. Same deal here, folks. I'll move this just around. Uh, again, taking the end of this thing, we'll insert it in here. Just kind of move it till it lines up, and then there we go. It should slide right in. We'll line this up, and then putting our hand on the fuselage, we'll go ahead and snap them together. We'll see those pins come in and then go out, and that's it. They are locked in place. So I'm full zoom out. And as we flip this thing around, you can see we are fully together. Just an awesome, awesome assembly. And that's it, folks. The airplane is uh, completely assembled. Now that the major assembly is complete, um, it's now time to just really set up the battery compartment area, the receiver area. You can see I just pulled the wings off it just so it's a little easier to maneuver. And uh, per my standard procedure, I went ahead and I removed the included Velcro. I just peeled it off the floor. And I went ahead and used my uh, shelf liner with double-sided tape so I could use uh, my, uh, my batteries on there. 
without using any Velcro on my batteries. That's just how I like to do it. As you guys, uh, some of you have seen my videos, some of you have not. I just like to not have uh, Velcro on my battery. So you can see here I have a Spectrum 2200 4 cell. That's all it needs. Just a little power to get it on up there and then glide around. Uh, you can see my receiver way in the back. I went ahead and put my uh, antennas, one across here with some 3M blender. This one is 90 degrees to uh, this antenna right here. And those two antennas being 90 degrees to each other will minimize uh, the chance of any uh, signal loss. It'll get you that uh, dual diversity and the best reception out of both antennas. So, and that's pretty much it, folks, for the, uh, for the entire setup. And uh, we'll get the canopy back on and uh, we're pretty much ready to go out to the field. Okay guys, you can see here the uh, completed airplane. I think I was able to get it all in the frame. It makes me look small. It's a full 2,500 millimeters and it is just simply huge. Um, after getting it together, after getting the receiver and battery in it as we just saw, the next steps really are just to basically uh, make sure all your ailerons, flaps, elevator, rudder, everything's neutralized. Make sure we lock down those set screws that are in the back for the tail and just make sure everything's moving in the right direction. Set our flap throws and we're pretty much ready to go out and uh, fly this thing. So that'll be the next thing that we show you guys. Uh, stay tuned for those. Those are coming up. Just check in the upper right hand corner of uh, this video and uh, we'll be putting up those flight demonstration videos um, as we do put them out. Um, once again, folks, this thing is awesome. I mean, it really, the, 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 the skin texture, I don't know how they got this foam so kind of glassy smooth, but they really did a nice job. Some of the other features like this plastic leading edge are just out of this world because you know you'll be landing this probably often in grass and that's going to keep that leading edge from getting dinged up uh, at all and um, it disassembles real easy again save that foam crate folks for when you want to transport this thing uh, it does disassemble pretty easily for transport and uh, it's just an awesome model i'm also showcasing it here sort of on uh, john zinn's cruising uh, um, um, airplane stand which really is a nice tabletop stand i'll try to put the link below for that as well the covid outbreak and all that stuff may have uh, kind of slowed down sales but but check with Cruz in because I think he's uh, uh, he's uh, probably still either selling them or going to sell them again soon, I hope. Uh, and it's a great way to support an American uh, product for sure. Um, but anyway, folks, uh, nice model. I'm digging this thing. It is simply huge. And it, as you can see, it assembles in just a few minutes. Even on camera, I think I was able to get it together in like just a, like, probably, I think it was like six minutes or something, fumbling around doing it on camera. It was that easy, uh, really easy to assemble. So anyway, guys, we do appreciate you watching. Um, check the links below if you guys choose to purchase one of these. If you use our link in the description, put it in your cart and purchase one. That supports our channel and we really do appreciate it. Also, follow us on Instagram, folks. We're, uh, we're putting out posts every day. We're trying to put out stuff every single day on Instagram and Twitter so you guys can kind of follow us and see what we're doing new because there's new models especially some of the FMS stuff we're gonna have some new really cool stuff uh, to show you guys uh, as well um, also uh, appreciate it if you guys like and subscribe please like and subscribe to our channel share our videos hit that notification bell below and that will advise you when our new videos are coming out. So anyway, folks, great airplane. Stay tuned for the flying videos. We do appreciate you guys checking out RC Informer. And as always, folks, we'll see you next time.